bless the Lord. Who forgives all our sins. His His mercy mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Have a seat, if you would, now for our readings this evening. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join in its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You take it from the sheep or from the goats. Just, you shall keep it on, until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat it, any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over a fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Until the morning, anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a, a day of remembrance. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. The word of the Lord. We will read the psalm responsibly by whole verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your enemy. You have redeemed my cause. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O O Jerusalem, hallelujah. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you shall proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. God, our God, has blessed us to bring good news to the poor, to heal the contrite of heart. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Then Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For Jesus knew who was to betray him. And for this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set an example that you should, you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, now, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. And you also should love one, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I have a seat. It says uh, it's time for me to preach, but I think at so many of the services during Holy Week, the preaching actually goes on as we do our our action together, as we do our in in uh, our liturgy together. And uh, tonight is uh, a special celebration of that as we 
uh, together wash each other's feet, not because probably any of you in here didn't already take a shower today, and especially tonight, kind of wash up your feet, maybe even do your, get a pedicure or something for this experience, you know. Uh, <laughs> but the point is that we do as Jesus did, uh, not, as Je not just as Jesus says, he tells us in the gospel, that we are to love one another. He assures us that he is the personification of the law, that all the laws of the Old Testament, the laws of, of the rabbis, the laws of, of the temple, though they stand, they are surpassed by the law of love. And Jesus demonstrates that love to his brothers and sisters. And we see it in the uh, response of Peter, most especially when Peter says, no, no, you got this wrong. Uh, you know, you're not supposed to be washing my feet. I'm supposed to be washing yours. And Jesus no, says, no, it's, it's just the opposite. We love one another. There is no hierarchy of, of, uh, of in love. We love one another and we love each other just as, as powerfully as we possibly can. And I want to show you that I love you as well. And so he washes their feet. For us, it's a symbolic experience and it leads uh, as it did in the gospel to that, or connects intimately to the experience of our table tonight when we prayed in our first reading uh, that tonight we celebrate the institution of the Eucharist, also the institution of the sacrament uh, that we in our denomination call holy orders, our uh, priesthood, diaconate, and uh, episcopacy. Obviously, they weren't defined back then the way they are now, but uh, Jesus uh, appointed uh, the apostles as leaders in the church. He washed their feet, and he sat and ate with them, and it's in the middle of that supper that he announces uh, that, that you are to f we are to follow him. It's why we call this Monday Thursday from the Latin mandare, which means to a uh, mandate. Jesus commands us to do as he he did. And so we celebrate at our table this evening as well. So I'm not going to talk very long. I think the, the talking, uh, the, real, the real sermon is in the doing. Uh, the real sermon is when we come together tonight and celebrate our, around our table and receive communion together and take that love into the world. Uh, the real sermon is when uh, we demonstrate to each other, even if symbolically, that we care for each other so much that we desire to wash each other's feet and to demonstrate that love. And we do that here in this church, but if it stops here in this church, if that symbolism is only symbolism and is not carried out in how it is that we are in the world around us, then I'm sort of disinviting you to come up to wash your feet tonight because it won't make any sense. The washing of feet is a kind of a commitment that as a Christian, this is how you want to be with virtually everyone else in the world, no matter where we find them, no, how no matter how they define themselves. And today we are clearly... Um, struggling with a lot of those issues um, in our politic. So I invite you forward. Um, and the way we, uh, well, I've been schooled in how we do it here at Good Shepherd, and that is that you can wash anybody's feet that you want to. And so if people don't want to come up, that's fine. If people do, that's fine. Uh, and just pick somebody or just serendipitously uh, wa wash uh, each other's feet uh, as uh, there's no order. There's no right way. So I invite you forward, any of you who are bold enough to commit yourself. <laughs> okay, well...
bushes. Here, sit here. She's bringing more water. Yeah.
stand together now for the prayers of the people. We gather as the household of God, apostles, prophets, martyrs, servants, to pray for the church and all humankind, saying, Come, Lord Jesus. For refugees, for the homeless, and for all who have nowhere to lead their head, or to lay their head, excuse me, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. For those unable to eat at the Lord's table or at any other table, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. For the body of Christ fractured in a world of violence and war, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. For those who betray and for those whom they may betray, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. For all in any need, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. For ourselves, who gather to celebrate the Lord's Passover and the bread we eat and the cup we drink, we pray. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Lord God, as we gather this night in your presence, remembering your son's life among us, especially as he sat down with his followers to celebrate at the table of their Passover. We ask that you bless us on our journey and that the promise to feed us with your Eucharist might be something that we continue to say yes to in our hearts and in our bodies and in our whole being. And that the promise to wash each other's feet and to wash the feet particularly of those who are needy and poor is a promise that reigns in our hearts and flows from our baptismal vows. In your presence tonight, give us the grace, as we know you will, for our journey and open us to the many ways that you call us into unity with you through your Son, Jesus, and in the power of your Holy Spirit given. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the peace and joy of the Lord be with each and every one of you. Offer each other now, if you would, some sign of the Lord's peace. <laughs> couple of short announcements, uh, just an invitation that uh, tomorrow, tomorrow evening at Friday evening, uh, we celebrate uh, the uh, crucifixion of Jesus uh, as it is Good Friday. The service is, is uh, the most powerful part of the service, of course, is the reading of the Passion of St. John uh, together and uh, contemplating and meditating on on his words, there will be no music. It'll be a quiet and a very somber service. And I invite you all to be part of that as well, uh, if you'd like. And then on Saturday, the culmination of the Triduum, the, the three sacred days is our vigil ceremony during which we'll light the Easter fire and bless water and uh, proclaim our baptismal promises again to each other. And celebrate uh, Eucharist around the table. There is no Eucharist tomorrow evening, but there is a, a simple communion a distribution as part of the service. If you are offering your gift at the table and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, first go be reconciled with your brother or sister and then come back and offer your gift.
My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, and he might, that he might draw the whole world unto himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, Father, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this song to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, and to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, Father, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, Father, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Jesus. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in constancy, unity, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through Jesus and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, <coughs> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage with gladness and singleness of heart. As many of you know, uh, we celebrate a short vigil here, an overnight vigil actually, um, and the Eucharist is brought into the altar of repose, which for us is in our parlor uh, up front in the church. Uh, because uh, we started it last year and it seemed to work, um, it's basically done virtually, so when you go home, since you're here, uh, when you go home, if you want to uh, visit or spend time in quiet prayer or contemplation, you just click on the link that you got, should have gotten in the uh, voice as well as the little uh, email that I sent out to everybody this morning. And that will uh, uh, focus on Uh, so you're welcome to do that anytime overnight. Uh, there is a song, a hymn that we'll sing as I process back to the, uh, to the altar of repose. Uh, so I'd invite you to join in singing Were You There, which is number 172 in the prayer book, in the hymnal. <laughs> 